Welcome to Daily News Podcast, the voice of Mangalore today. Here, we dissect the news, uncover the stories, and bring to light the issues that matter most to you. Join us as we navigate through today's pressing news. In Mangaluru, preparations are in full swing for the smooth counting of votes polled for the Lok Sabha elections. Deputy Commissioner Malai Muhilan shared details of the elaborate arrangements in place for the counting scheduled on June 4 at NITK, Saratkal. A three-phase security system will be enforced, with CCTV surveillance and strict restrictions in the vicinity. With a voter turnout of 77.56 percent, a total of 14,009,653 voters cast their vote, including 8,537 postal votes. City Police Commissioner Anupam Agarwal assured tight security measures with the deployment of CAR, KSRP, and paramilitary forces during the counting process. Stay tuned to Mangalore Today for the latest updates on the election count. Mangalore Today brings you the latest update from Mangaluru, where Mangalore North MLA Dr. Y. Bharat Shetty slammed the police department for filing a B report without investigating the case of performing namaz on a road in Konkanadi. He criticized the Congress-led state government's appeasement policy and expressed concerns about public inconvenience caused by such activities. The MLA supported VHP leader Sharon Pumpwell's stance on social media and accused the government of trying to create confusion and disturb peace in society. Dr. Shetty highlighted the failure of the state government in implementing development projects and assured voters of the BJP's victory in upcoming elections despite challenges from rebel candidates. Stay tuned to Mangalore Today for more updates on this evolving story. Welcome back to Mangalore Today. After a refreshing two-month summer break, children in Mangaluru are excited to be heading back to school for the new academic year 2024-25. Teachers were seen warmly welcoming the students with traditional Arathi, while some schools even organized processions to kickstart the year. The city's schools were beautifully decked up to receive the eager students. The Education Department has ensured that all students receive their textbooks and uniforms as they embark on this new learning journey with enthusiasm. Let's wish all the students a successful and fulfilling year ahead. In Mangaluru, Senior Congress Leader B. Ramanatha Rai has expressed dissatisfaction over the Suomoto case filed regarding the recent incident of namaz on the road outside a mosque in Kankanadi. Rai highlighted that various religious events have taken place on the road and not all should be viewed negatively. He emphasized that similar action was not taken during instances of provocative speeches. Rai also called for action against those who filmed the incident and disrupted communal harmony. In another development, KPCC General Secretary Padmaraj R and several party leaders, including Deepak Pujari and Ashraf, extended support to Congress candidates contesting in the Southwest graduates and teachers constituency. In a daring daylight burglary, thieves targeted a house in Modijera near Konaj in Mangaluru. The house, owned by Chandra, was robbed of cash and valuables while he and his sister were out for work. The thieves gained entry by breaking the front door and later breaking open a cupboard to steal the belongings. The crime was discovered upon the family's return in the evening, sparking concerns over security in the area. Authorities are investigating the matter, and residents are urged to stay vigilant and report any suspicious activities. In Mangaluru, the 61-day annual fishing ban will be imposed along the coastal belt from tomorrow, June 1st, until July 31st. The ban aims to safeguard the fish population during their breeding season and curb the fishing of young fish. This conservation effort highlights the importance of sustainable fishing practices to maintain the marine ecosystem's health. In Udupi, the political scene is heating up as the BJP has taken action against four-party office bearers for supporting former MLA Raghupathi Bhatt, who is contesting as an independent candidate. The expelled members include Mahesh Thakur, Upendra Nayak, Roshan Shetty, and Junaid. The district BJP president stated that the decision was made after unsatisfactory responses from the leaders and they have been expelled for a term of six years. With tensions rising, the political landscape in Udupi is certainly one to watch. Today in Bantwal, a gas tanker overturned on NH-75 near Thum, causing a major traffic disruption. Fortunately, there was no gas leakage and authorities acted swiftly to manage the situation. 
police and fire service teams were quick to respond, ensuring traffic flow resumed without any further issues. Residents are advised to stay cautious while driving through the area. In a recent development, the Mangaluru East Police have closed the case against a group accused of offering namaz on a public road in Kankanadi. The case was filed after a video of the incident went viral on social media. The group of 10 persons was accused of causing inconvenience to the public. However, the police commissioner mentioned that there was no intention to disrupt public movement. As a result, the case has been closed by filing the B report. The inspector who filed the case without informing the higher authorities has been sent on compulsory leave. An inquiry will be conducted by an officer of the rank of Assistant Commissioner of Police. In a significant move, India has repatriated 100 metric tons of gold from the UK to domestic vaults in the financial year 2024. This marks one of the largest gold movements by the country since 1991, aiming to bolster its gold reserves. The total gold holding has increased by 27.46 metric tons, now standing at 822 metric tons, with a more balanced distribution between local and foreign storage. The precious metal is securely stored in high security vaults in Mumbai and Nagpur. This operation was conducted in secrecy by officials from the Ministry of Finance, the RBI, and other agencies. India's strategic decision reflects efforts towards asset diversification and strengthening its financial security. In a shocking turn of events, a scandal involving the unauthorized transfer of crores of rupees from the Karnataka Maharshi Valmiki Scheduled Tribes Development Corporation's KMVSTDC bank account has come to light in Bengaluru. The account superintendent Chandra Shekhar's tragic suicide revealed the misappropriation of funds implicating KMVSTDC Managing Director J.G. Padmanab and others. Chief Minister Sidaramaya is examining the facts, talk with Deputy CM D.K. Shivakumar, stating there is no question of protecting anyone. Home Minister G. Parameshwara admitted the scam took place, questioning if the minister was aware. The BJP has given a week's ultimatum for the minister's resignation, threatening protests. The case may be handed over to the CBI if the amount involved exceeds Rs. 3 crores. As the investigation intensifies, the people of Karnataka eagerly await justice and accountability in this massive financial scandal. Mangaluru, in a significant development, suspended Janata Dal secular leader Prajwal Ravana has been sent to seven-day-long seat custody in Bengaluru after being arrested upon his arrival from Germany. The Hassan MP is facing charges of sexually abusing several women and filming the acts. He was apprehended by a special investigation team at the Bengaluru airport in the early hours of Friday. Prajwal, grandson of former Prime Minister H.D. Dev Gowda, was transported to the SIT headquarters by a five-member all-women squad and will be questioned by a team consisting of 20 women police officers. Prajwal's lawyer emphasized against a media trial and stated that he is cooperating with the investigation. This incident follows the establishment of the SIT on April 28, after the first FIR was filed against Prajwal in Holinar Sapura. The developments in this case are being closely monitored. In an incident that caused panic among passengers, a Vistara flight from Delhi to Srinagar was at the center of a bomb threat scare. Flight UK 611, carrying 177 passengers and one infant, landed safely at Srinagar Airport after security forces swiftly responded to the situation. The aircraft was directed to an isolation bay upon landing as per standard protocol. Thankfully, all passengers are safe as thorough security checks were conducted and no explosives were found on board. Following the hoax call, flight operations were temporarily halted for over two hours at Srinagar Airport. Authorities are now working to identify the source of the threat and ensure the safety of all air travel. Vistara reassured that the safety and security of passengers, crew, and aircraft remain their top priority. In a dramatic turn of events, Mangalore Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal announced his decision to surrender before the police at Tihar Jail on June 2 in connection with a money laundering case related to the now defunct liquor policy. Kejriwal, who has been on interim bail since May 10, revealed concerns about his health, stating doctors warned him about potential signs of a serious illness in his body. Defiant and resolute, Kedrawal proclaimed his commitment to fighting against dictatorship and alleged harassment by the BJP. 
Despite facing challenges during his previous jail term, Kedrawal vowed to continue working for the welfare of Mangalore residents. He urged the public to support his unwell mother during his time in jail. This development comes as Kedrawal navigates legal proceedings linked to the liquor policy case, further emphasizing his unwavering dedication to his political commitments. In Mangalore Today News, the scorching heat wave continues to grip various parts of India, claiming the lives of at least 54 people. Northern and central regions, including Delhi, are facing temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius. A dust storm is predicted in Uttar Pradesh and other states. The India Meteorological Department forecasts light rainfall with thunderstorms in northwest India. Tragically, Bihar, Odisha, Jharkhand, and Rajasthan are among the states reporting heat stroke related deaths. In Delhi, a man succumbed to organ failure as his body temperature soared to a staggering 108 degrees Fahrenheit. The IMD warns of severe heat wave conditions in several states. Meanwhile, the southwest monsoon has advanced into Kerala and is predicted to reach more southern and northeastern states soon. Stay tuned to Mangalore today for more updates on the weather situation. Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivakumar of Karnataka has raised alarming concerns about black magic rituals being performed by political opponents in a Kerala temple against him and Chief Minister Siddharamaya. He claimed that a yagya is being conducted by agoris, aiming to destabilize the Congress government in Karnataka. The ritual involves the sacrifice of 21 red goats, three buffaloes, 21 black sheep, and five pigs. Mr. Shivakumar hinted that politicians from Karnataka are behind this, urging the media to investigate. Despite these threats, he expressed faith in divine protection. Meanwhile, a legislators' meeting is scheduled on June 2nd in Bengaluru to discuss party matters and the MLC election. Among 300 aspirants, 65 have been shortlisted, including Dr. Yathindra, CM Siddharamaya's son. Leaders who sacrifice their seats and represent different regions will also be considered. In a shocking incident at Connor Airport, a cabin crew member of Air India Express was arrested for smuggling gold in her rectum. The accused identified as Sarabi Khatan, was caught hiding around 960 grams of gold after a flight from Muscat. This is not the first instance of her involvement in gold smuggling, according to reports. The Directorate of Revenue Intelligence seized the gold, and Sarabi Khatun has been remanded to 14 days in custody after being produced before the magistrate. Stay tuned as more details on this case unfold in and around Mangalore. Mangalore, April 15, 2024. In a groundbreaking verdict, former U.S. President Donald Trump has been convicted on all charges in his hush money case involving porn star Stormy Daniels. The New York jury found him guilty of falsifying business records to hide a payment intended to silence Daniels, marking him as the first former U.S. president ever convicted of a crime. Despite his conviction, Trump remains defiant, declaring his innocence and vowing to let the voters decide his fate. The sentencing is set for July 11th, just days before the Republican National Convention, where Trump is expected to be nominated. This historic trial has cast a shadow on Trump's campaign to unseat President Joe Biden as he faces additional federal and state charges. The political impact of this development remains uncertain, but it could potentially influence swing votes in key states. Trump, a real estate mogul turned president, is likely to face probation as a first-time convict and an appeal is expected. The trial has captivated the nation and raised questions about accountability and the rule of law in the highest office of the land. In a major development, Janata Dahl, secular MP Prajwal Ravana, accused in a sex tapes case, has been arrested upon landing in Bengaluru from Germany. The Karnataka Police's special investigation team detained him and took him for interrogation at the CID office. Notably, a team of women police officers, led by a woman IPS officer, played a key role in his arrest. Prajwal Ravana, seeking re-election as an NDA candidate from the Hassan Lok Sabha seat, had left the country amidst circulating explicit video clips. The MP, facing three rape cases, recently stated he would cooperate with the ongoing inquiry. He attributed the allegations against him to political conspiracies, citing the involvement of Congress leaders. The arrest marks a significant turn in this high-profile case, capturing the attention of many in Karnataka. We thank you for watching today's news roundup.
To dive deeper into our stories, please visit our website at mangaloretoday.com. And to never miss an update from us, click that subscribe button. Here's to staying connected. Good evening.